What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Duel Links Team Wars. I'm your host, Dark. We got Smoke on Duel Links versus Abusement Park. Let's go. Looks like we got a nice little matchup here. Something we see quite often nowadays. Maybe possible Onomat versus Water Splash. Yo, what's going on, Kira Mothwing? Welcome, welcome. I hope everybody's having a good weekend so far. We're just coming to our last games of the weekend. Hope this one is just as epic as the ones before it. Shouldn't be anything short of epic. It looks like we got a nice lineup from both teams here. Starting it off with Sham and I Magic Cart. Ooh, this one's looking kind of juicy. Let's see how, let's see how it plays out. All right, so he's starting things off. Can't do anything without the sister. Gaga's sister gonna search the bolt. Putting it, putting it back. She said, actually, never mind. I'm putting him back to have a, a follow-up and a coat, so be able to initiate that level six exceed play. Oh, nothing short of a decent first turn for Onomat. Gonna probably summon Bouncer. Just chill on it. This is gonna really lock him out of any of that those diva shenanigans. But being a water deck, you know, there's still ways to play around this, like having a possible infantry in hand. But let's see how he opens up. Maybe the only thing he has is a diva. Really taking his time to think this one through, so maybe, maybe what I'm saying is possibly true, or maybe he's worried about that back row, what it could be. Is it, is it game? The only time I ever see people take this long to make a move is it's usually some big damage or it's going to be a, a game winning play. So finally deciding, okay, he's going to book it. So he says no more fear of that back row. So he did have the D.Va. Magikarp should win nine. Uh, we'll see. Not a bad start from him at all. Though that book was kind of a wrench in his plans. Being able to summon, then being able to summon the infantry, but that will be offerings to the doomed. Does he have the angler? Oh no, Diva looking kind of lonely out there. Shoot Nate in the head one time. There, there's a lot that can happen. You definitely do not want that diva out there chilling by herself. You had the infantry as backup, but now that got offered. So now we know he has that follow up Gaga head, and you know what that means. So he does have the angler. Took a minute to think about it, but I mean, he's probably just more worried about that follow up. <laughs> a wise man once said. Give me, give me, give me, give me some Gaga head. Plan B. <laughs> All right, so. So, yeah, we, we are going to. Going to take some time. Two minutes remaining of the channel points prediction. Yeah, if you get, if you guys want to make take some risks with those channel points, 
Bet who you think is going to win the match. Put up as many points as you want. Territory of the Sharks. Going to make everybody level 4. I smell a Brionic. Not anymore. Hope Wolven Dragon Spider Shark. Said, get that out of here. So he won't be able to draw because he did the offerings, but we all knew he had that good, 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 good Gaga head, and he's gonna bring back. Gonna bring back. The Gaga sister gonna initiate another level six, get that draw, and he's gonna be able to summon M7. What's going on, Vic Jr.? Welcome, welcome. So he's gonna go in. He's gonna read him a bedtime story. He's gonna tuck him in real nice. Good night, bye. And he lived unhappily ever after. Boom, boom, Onomats. The Sham's gonna take it. Actually, Sham is on top, so here, let me fix that real quick. Damn. Update these scores here real quick. Explosive. First game from Shams. Yo, what's going on, Shouse? We are going back in. There we go. So there is going to be a repeat from Smogon Duel Links as well. He said, let me run that back. That offerings, that offerings was a fluke. You're lucky I didn't have Lance. That's what, that's what I would be saying right now. You're lucky I didn't have Lance for that offerings, or you would be so... You would get so negated next turn. You would get destroyed. Get out my face. So this time, he's going to be able to start it off. So this is what things look like if they were different. He is going to trigger that. He's going to have that Abyss Dweller equipped with the infantry. <clears throat> Let's go exceed Shokan. Abyss Dweller. Alright, just one back row. That's all he said that's all I need. But we know we know how on them had to go. They they love having that true nade. Alright, offerings to the Doom right off the bat. Get that out my face. So he's gonna keep him from activating any graveyard effects though. I feel like Onomats don't really have any really triggered graveyard effects, so he just doing it for fun. So he is gonna summon the sister. Through sister everything is possible, so he is going to search you know, it's usually Wind or Bolt. Or if you get Fiendish Chain, there will be no searches. There will be no level manipulation either. Fully negated card right here. Hmm. Really taking his time here. So he's going to offerings itself to be able to trigger. He's going to offerings. He's going to offerings himself to trigger the go to search the Gaga win. Oh my God. What a creative play here. So he's going to trigger on him out of play. Really quick thinking on Sham's part. Truly a witty play right here to... This man is a madman, offering his own monster, but there's a method to this madness. So, 
There goes another it be like that. Yeah. What a nice guy being a good sport, letting him play it out. This man playing poker. It's transcended normal thinking. Oh, bring the sister back. Guess I got my sister back. About to unleash the whole family one time. Y'all got samurai gonna get pumped? Oh my goodness. Never mind. He doesn't even. He doesn't even. Jesus. Exact game. It is exact game. Jesus. Uncalled for. So, unfortunate for Magic Heart. He just had the stuff. He just had the stuff. That's quick thinking though, man. He's like, I got that offerings in hand. He's like, he had to stop for a second. Every all time slowed down. He knew the play. He saw the he saw the victory in sight. And at that moment, he hadn't even searched the second win. So quick thinking. Well played by Shams making use of that OTK. Hmm, to deal with Onomat, they gotta bring in something. Like, I feel like water is not too bad of a choice to bring in against them, but it was just some unfortunate circumstances there where it just allowed him to just break through and break the board. I think that offerings the first game was super crucial. So, will they send in something like that or something a little bit more resilient against OTKs? They're, they're taking their time with this one. So, maybe... Maybe, you know, it, it's just kind of hard to deal with water. There is no, like, direct counter. Though I have been seeing people bring out, like, Cyber Dragons. I feel like Cyber Dragons can deal with them pretty good. I wonder if they, they have one in their lineup. That would be pretty neat. All right. Star stepping up. So, are we going to see some possible weather painters? Probably not. I don't think uh, they're using balance. I think balance is a I, I haven't seen a weather painter. So Sham at top, Blar on the bottom. They've been using d -Draw lately. Well then, there is a possible weather painter. Oh, could be Lunas. Lunas is always a possibility. We've also seen Fire Kings using this skill as well. Ah, it could be Fire Kings. Fire Kings is a good matchup against 
these overly aggressive decks because they tend to overextend. That's just their play style. So having that Garunix coming back just equalizing the field every time. But we know Blarhan is known for that weather painter goodness. What does the forecast say? He says, I'm going to just end my turn. So that is sort of like a Luna Light esque play. This is also something Fire Kings can do, but you know, that's only if he bricked. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Going to summon the Gaga sister. We're either going to see a wind or a bolt here. He's going to grab the bolt, so just looking for follow up turn setups here. Most likely has the Gaga code, of course. Going to summon it. Bring back the Onomatopoeia. Better have three spheres. <laughs> Your Gaga sister was good last night. This is Gaga sister. This sister is here now. Synchro Shokan. So we see the bouncer. So he didn't use the Onomata play. So he's going to bring back that glove. Never leave home without the glove. The glove always comes back. Going to go into. Abyss Dweller. Ooh. So, he smells, he smells Luna Light. He smells Luna Light. That's what that play means right there. Yeah, gonna run into the kite. Very frustrating situation to be in right here. Like, I want that damage. But he got that kite in the graveyard. I ain't, I ain't trying to give him free cards. That's not what we do. That's not how I was taught how to play, he says. He's like, I don't, I don't think I want to go in. Alright, so he's just going to pass. He says, you're not getting free cards right now, pal. Kind of go ahead and draw off the top of his deck. Probably gets the card he wanted to search anyway. Because that's just how luck goes. That's RNG. Now, we still have yet to know what deck he's running. But I'm pretty sure it's possibly Fire King or Luna Light. So this board that he has set up is pretty nice for both. So it is Fire Kings. So he is going to trigger that onslaught of the Fire King. He's going to bring out the Garunix most likely. As we all know it dies at the end of the turn. But you see the picture here? Oh no. He's like, nah fam. Abyss dwelling. So no, none of, none of his effects will be triggered. If he was destroyed in battle or was sent to the graveyard. So it's going to de destroy it and come back the following turn. So Garunix is going to trigger. And Bouncer is going to negate and inflict 500 back at you. Alright, he said 
He said, my bouncer ain't going nowhere. But now this lonely Garunix is there by itself. Life points possibly open. We already know that there's a bolt in his hand. Oh, he is going to go for Lethal. It's look like he's going for that big push. Gaga Bolt. There's one thing keeping you from lethal. You got two attacks. You got to hope that he does not have another kite roid or any other hand trap. As one of his attacks will be getting blocked from that kite roid in the graveyard. So we're going to inflict 24 directly. Most likely he does want the first one to go through, right? Because he wants that D draw. So he does have the veil. So now that the lethal is gone. Lethal's gone. You have a Garunix coming back the following turn. And... Yeah. You got you to gotta deal with that. This time he doesn't have the Abyss Dweller this time as well. Unfortunate. So close. So he's going to draw any card he wants and add it to his hand. The Garunix is going to come back. Most likely get negated by the Bouncer. So he'll get negated and get reduced to a mere 300 life points. So... He is going to grab the Fire King Island. He's going to make it pop one more time. What will be his addition from his deck? That's what we need to see here. No more negates from that Bouncer, which means Garunix can have its fun now. And he is going to grab the Arvada and add it from the, add it from the deck to his hand. Another onslaught of the Fire Kings. So it's looking like he's about to get that loop going and just equalize the whole field turn after turn. Ah, exceed Shokan. Thirty-nine. Oh, going to go into the Utopia Ray. C thirty-nine has entered the building. So he has about two more materials left. He's gonna go all the way up. And up. And up. He didn't even have to do he didn't even have to do that last one. He's just doing stuff for fun. He's gonna inflict that d -d 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 damage right there. Going in. Boom shakalaka. Larhan gonna take it. Explosive. C thirty nine Utopia plays. Yeah, that's for my that's for my fallen brethren. Revenge clap. All right, they're going right back in. They're not wasting any time here.
real quick. Now it's 2 1. So now it's looking like he's going against Blue Eyes now. So now, depending on what version of the Blue Eyes deck he's running, he possibly now has Karma Cuts for those Garunixes now. And he's got big bodies. Got big bodies and spirits negating graveyard effects. I'm gonna pop the kite roid. Get things started for himself here, adding the Arvada to his hand. Yeah, usually popping kite is not something you want to do, but it's not exactly terrible either because you still get the use out of it from the graveyard. But, you know, optimally he probably would have wanted to pop a Garunix or a Fire King Barong. I'm going to start things off here with the Sage. Will he allow it? it? Says no. Stop right there. There will be no eggs being added to your hand. Okay, go ahead and pop the Garunix here, and he's going to go into the Ancient Rules. Because he, he is in quite the situation here, because now he has access to the Spirit Dragon play, and Garunix doesn't happen until next turn. So he'll be effective, if, he's, if this attack goes through, he'll be able to effectively... We had to shut down two cards for one card. Ridiculousness. Ridiculousness, I tell you. Yeah, he's just gonna activate it for fun. Yeah, just a real unfortunate situation for the Fire King player to be in right here because... He's losing so much out of this. It negated his... Effectively negated... His Arvada and his Garunix. But he still has some juice going in him. He's going to be able to pop one of his Fire King monsters from his hand and then search his deck for another Fire King monster. Pop in the Barong. But when you got a Spirit Dragon on the field and he's just negating your graveyard effects once per turn, it is very, very grueling. It's a grind. You're running low on resources. That monster's bigger than you. And he can tag out into something bigger. Rough, man. Definitely not an optimal position to be in, nor would you want to be in this situation, in this matchup. Is going to summon the Arvada. Actually going to battle phase? No way. No way. This guy's a madman. He is going to trigger the Arvada's effect. Arvada Chibata. He's going in. He said, you're tagging out. You're tagging out right now. Bring out the Azure, I don't care. So, follow-up turn, the Azure will be protected from the destruction effect of the Garunix. But the Blue Eyes that's coming out will actually go right back to the graveyard. Get back in there. 
So smart move from Barhan just to keep the field equalized. Not common that blue eyes are able to just swarm big bodies on the field right away. So as long as he doesn't have a specific set of cards, he will he will have to effectively get over this Garunic somehow. Maybe have to wait out the turn. Really taking his time to think this one through. One of those few situations where your blue eyes monsters aren't big enough to get over the opposing ones. Just by 200. Just by 200. Alright, taking his time here. So, just gonna end his turn to sit on it. So now, Larhan's gonna buy himself a little bit more time to cycle. What is he waiting for? Taking his time to think, I suppose. We don't know what his hand is. We we do know that he hasn't really drawn much back row here. Just some ancient rules. Doesn't really have any aggressive play, so he wasn't able to get over the Arvada. I mean the Garunix. But now if if Blarahan pops Gonna have that follow up destruction and then this time, Azure won't be protected from that. So he is going to trigger the, the onslaught of the Fire Kings. Bringing out the Barong. So yeah, just going to... Just getting some search power, bending his deck. So he is going to rid the field of that board. Like there's also that possibility that Shams didn't want to commit knowing that when that Garunix comes back, you know, he's going to lose his whole field. But maybe this was the moment that he was waiting for to make that move now. So we're going to see it in this turn. But Blarhan popping the Fire King Barong, he's going to have himself some follow-up for next turn as well. So both players thinking ahead here. Bam, Melody. So his patience paid off. Got himself a melody this time. But still has to deal with the, the possible follow up here. Now, does he have a tuner? That is the question. Does he have a tuner? If he has a tuner, he. He has a tuner, possibly. Gonna add a polymerization from his deck to his hand. Going to go for game. Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon going to banish the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon from his extra deck to go in for game. Show me the kite roid. Right. 
And he's gonna go in again. Holy whoa. Okay, guy. I am coming out with the, the anime plays right there. Oh my oh my goodness. Hold the phone. Break out the manga. Lighting and effects. Jesus. It was just Shams popping off right now. He's heating up. 3 1 record. Starting things off. Explosive. Both decks highly effective. Did work with Onomat. And now starting to starting to rev things up with those blue eyes plays. I was I was surely not ready for Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. So him summoning that Barong actually kind of worked against him, allowing him to get that second attack. So, very unfortunate. So now... Is Barajan going to come out with... Either has his second deck or does he want to... I don't think he's going to run... I don't think he wants to run that Fire King deck that it just literally shut down all his options with just a single Spirit Dragon. It was so unfortunate that it came out so early. Like it comes out really early and it just eats up all your resources, especially when you're trying to cycle and build that advantage. What's going on? Rinzen! Rinzen! Good to see you, my man. Hopefully everybody's having a nice Sunday. You guys kicking back, relaxing, enjoying some top tier Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links action. Larhound is stopping back up to the plate. He said, you got me there. But now, I got you. Bringing out the shark. You're in his territory now. Your graveyard effects are about to be banished to the abyss. So not only that, he is going to be starting it off just how things should be, being able to get that first turn because he did lose out the last game. How long have we waited to be able to have the option to go first after losing, or at least choose who goes first after you lose the first game? What was Sham's first deck? Ona Mats. There was a key moment where he, his whole play could have got shut down, but he offerings his own as he offerings his own Gaga sister to play around a fiendish chain, and then he searched out Gaga win. Rough. Explosive. So he's gonna start things off with that diva the diva shenanigans. So going to bring out the infantry here. This will actually allow him an, an additional summon, but he would rather... Does water actually even counter Ono though? I feel like because they have... I, I don't know, because they, they have the ability to, to pop with infantry and a monster, so they kind of can play around. Got himself a face down and an abyss dweller in effect. Oh, 
So I'm just going to set two face down. Just going to chill on both his back row. This can be kind of nerve wracking for the blue eyes player because now his stones can be rendered useless. It becomes like a game of does this guy have the the lance to counter my back row? He's negating my he's negating my graveyard effects, so stones don't allow him to access his blue eyes monsters. Rough man. Mystical space typhoon. Somebody's been purchasing some of that new box action. I miss seeing this card. I used to run this card in the TCG. So. The other set was a bluff. So now he's going to go in with the Abyss Dweller. And he's just going to take that damage. Big 22 hit. Definitely nothing to scoff at. It hurts. But I think not having a graveyard hurts a little more. A blue eyes brick? What a surprise. I don't know, it's not only is it a brick, you're looking at a water matchup. Which means you have to be on your best behavior, or it's gonna shut down all your options. I'm taking his real long think here. Like I said, it, it could be really nerve wracking having to deal, having to just stare down in the abyss dweller. That back row is possibly something, unless the toggles are coming from the abyss dweller's effect. So he is going to summon the sage with the eyes of blue. And he said, nah, lock you down. 50 shades of blue. Blue eyes, white dragon. Treacherous trap hole. Cham's doing it again. He's doing that thing again. So, still solid to be able to. Still gonna. So, another self destruction effect that allows him to play around another fiendish chain. Well played. So, into a melody. Okay, buddy. You're not playing around here. So he said, you know, I'll give up. Oh, wow. No way he has. No way he has it. Alt. Okay, buddy. Just when you think blue eyes can't OTK. He draws that hand. Look at that. Didn't that did that blue eyes just do the worm? Did that blue eyes just do the worm right now? He is going to... Oh my goodness. And a Q anime effects. Blue eyes ultimate dragon with the Draco. He's breaking out the Draco. Explosive. Sham is on fire. Godlike ad timing? Oh my goodness. Sham is not playing around. Unfortunate for Blarhan. He had a really good solid field going there. Fortunately, Tretch put it into that. I think I got the score here. Yeah, I did. I did fix that. Okay. 
Okay, here, let me update these scores here. Yeah, Sham's popping off right now. Just, it seems like when things, when thing, when it rains, it pours. Every time he has that, that, that play around the fiendish chain, it just leads into the most explosive follow-up we've ever seen. Had three blue eyes in hand with the alternative because of Melody. Summons ultimate blue eyes because he's like, I know you don't run Karibo. It's anime effects goes on. So in that moment too, he's revealed which version of the Blue Eyes deck he's running now. So we know he's not running the Karma Cuts now. We know he's running that Treacherous action, which we did kind of see a clue led to that because we did see the the ancient rules. Usually when they're running the Treach, they, little, they like to splash the ancient rules and the books and stuff like that. So let's see. Let's see. How Mogon is gonna bounce back. You know, things kinda you know, there's a couple of unfortunate situations, but this is definitely not something that that, that they cannot bounce back from. So Kamikaze's gonna step up. Let's get it. Kamikaze have the answers. Does he have the answers? Let's begin. So, ultimate dragons. <clears throat> so, Sham is gonna actually be able to take this first turn. So, just gonna sit back on one back row. Now, definitely don't wanna chill on one back row, whether it be the possible Ona mats. Or any aggressive deck for that matter. Let's see how he's gonna get around this one back row. So, gonna start things off with Melody here. But he, he draws his energy, he calls upon an even stronger dragon. The fabled Chaos Dragon, Levenir. And he's got that initiator, he's, he's charged it up. That graveyard looking mighty healthy as well. Though, there's not a light monster in it yet. But, milling, milling the three and searching the raid and he now has his light he has access to it. Sham going in, but this looks like a rip. So Thunder Dragon Hawk. Going to bring back Thunder Dragon Roar. Going to summon a Chaos Dragon Levenir. Brims with that subscription. Does he have the Treacherous? It is the Treacherous. But. He knew. He knew. He, I guess he knew. But sort of greed. But then he does still get to summon. He play. He get, He effectively gets. He doesn't have to worry about Treach anymore. And he brings out a, a Thunder Dragon from his hand. Sorry, from his deck to his field. So, you know, he, he sort of cut the losses a bit, and he's also going to be able to allow himself to, to summon a level 9 Synchro. Allowing him to effectively search his deck for another Thunder Dragon card, as he did not activate any of the Thunder Dragon Darks effects this turn. But I, I see that his, his Thunder Dragon duo is banished, and he also used... He also used his level, level, uh, his uh, Thunder Dragon Hawk as well. So 
he has to have another Levineer, but she does have. So he's gonna go in for the big push. Effectively played around Tretch and still had more where that came from. Let's go Kamikaze. Explosive turn. That's gonna knock Sham off. Oops, accidentally. Kamikaze effectively putting the end to Sham's reign. It is now the year of the Kamikaze. Let's go. Peace is restored to the village. Now who's who's the new evil? Who is gonna step up and take Sham's place? So now the game, now the follow-up deck of choice is probably going to be how do they counter Thunder Dragons, which is not a hard thing to do. It's just a question if they have that counter. So let's see. That's... Buns is stepping up. Now Buns is in the mix. What's going on, Mata? Welcome, welcome. We got we got some vicious heads in the chat. We got Brims here. We got Shows here. We got the King of Zed. We got Epic. We got Lamp Posted. We got everybody. So, what's going on, Shams? You can finally relax. You did good. Now, Kamikaze. Will Kamikaze continue his reign after taking out Shams? Charge a light brigade two times in a row. That's when you know the Thunder Dragon's electricity is flowing through his veins. He's the chosen wielder of the Thunder Dragons. Not only that, light double dark. Instantaneous, instantaneous Levenir setup. So now you have to. Now you're now, now you're sort of stressing. Sort of. I'm so gonna toss the Dragon Dark to search another Dragon Dark. Catch up with bananas and milk. Oh my god. Did you throw up? Because I know I just did in my mouth a bit. Oh. Now Luna? Nah. Look at that. When was the last time you seen a volcano erupt? Fire kings are in town now. Explosion. It's already erupting right now. Boom. He's going to pop a monster in his hand. Popping the Barong. And now Arvada hops out the volcano. Onto the field. You know when Arvada comes out. It's about to be an annoying game because now there's not a there's not a Garunix about to trigger and you know you know that Dragon Dark is getting negated. Really. So just gonna cycle the Thunder Dragon, not gonna not gonna search, and also going to trigger the Barong effect to search the Garunic. So now the next effect activation is gonna be threatened by that young negation. Oh we got Clash Bruh in the house. Hype beast out there praying to the people gods.
<clears throat> Alright, so he's gonna take his sweet time, take some time to think. You got one back row. You got a dragon dark on the field, but you got Narvada in your face over here. Just threatening to negate anything. Book of Moon. Have you read that new Harry Potter, Raiden? No, you haven't. You should read it sometime. And now he's face down. Now it's back to... Buns. Still threatening that negate. Still looking like he's got this board sort of in control. That negates just keeping any crazy shenanigans from happening. Though he I haven't really been seeing him cycle those Fire King monsters. So let's see what we'll do here. So he is going to start the cycle. Popping the Garunix, adding... Adding another Arvada from his deck to his hand. Alright, here we go. Alright, he's going in. So he's gonna pop. Yep, kill off the Dragon Dark and then. Most likely Dragon Dark is going to trigger its effect. He is going to trigger his effect and will Arvada negate. Yes, he will, because why not? It's getting destroyed next turn anyways. Going to pop the Barong that he attacked with most likely. Oh, it's on to... So we know he had access to 11 air. Fire King Garunix is coming back. There will be no negation available anymore. Though... So, the Arvada is going to trigger and he's going to probably bring back Barong or something of that sort. But now let's look at this graveyard here. Looking really healthy. Double Dragon Dark in there. But there's definitely going to be possible searches. If he has a Levanir or a Dragon Duel. So it really becomes a game of how is he going to break this, this healthy board here and get that damage in. So. Aloof. Man's best friend. Thunder Dragon's best friend right here. Aloof Lupine. Going to banish the most optimal banish that you could ever have in your life. Dragon Dark and Dragon Roar. So Dragon Dark's going to give you that young search. And Dragon Roar is going to put one of those Thunder Dragons deck to your field. Effectively giving you a search and a level duplication setup. Jesus. This is the most valuable friend you can have in this deck. Aloof Lupine. Gonna, gonna bring back the Thunder Dragon Roar. Going to go into the bouncer. Oh, the M7 and Stellar. Going to, going to show him that new Harry Potter one more time, and he's going to activate level duplication, revealing the Levin near possibly. Nope, Thunder Dragon duo. Is chat sleeping today? Well, it, you know it is Sunday, and on the eighth day, we all rested. Even chat. Sometimes you gotta relax. It's the weekend. You gotta put your feet up. You gotta sit back, be quiet, and enjoy. The overlay. Oh, poof! Number 68. One short of nice. Gonna bring out the Santa Fond. Did not detach. Okay, he did detach some material. I was like, wait, hold up. I was like, he didn't activate the effect. Are you crazy? 
But he did activate the effect. So the cool thing about this card is it also cannot be destroyed by card effects. But it doesn't matter. It's shut down. He's gonna bring out another Arvada. Arvada Chibata. Going to exceed Shokan. Number 70. Oh, the bounce. Not the bouncer. But he's gonna gently move that Sanifon out of the way. Get out my way. So now Sanifon is gonna come back. Bigger than ever. Bigger than ever. Has no materials, by the way, because he was banished. So now, now he, he is going to be able to be destroyed by... Okay, there it goes. There it goes. The, there it goes. There goes the Levenir. And he banished... He banished the Constellar. He's banishing the Dragonhawk. And he banished the Dragon Duo. So actually, he didn't even gain anything out of that. He's just going in for the big damage. So that, that toggle, so it must be a, some sort of sphere Karibo. So yeah, sphere Karibo gonna slow some things down. So now does he have the Garunix? That's really what we're worried about here, because now his field is at risk. Onslaught of the Fire Kings. There it is. Oop, there it is. Very patient play by Buns. Just slowly equalizing the field and it all led up to this moment. Fire Kings explode. Got rid of the Sanifon, effectively dealt with it with the level four malevolent sin. Smart playing on Buns part. So Fire King Garunix is gonna come back and light the field up in flames. Burn! Gonna go for lethal now. Punish. The buns is gonna take it. Two to five. Kamikami, Kamikaze's bouncing back. Now I have to deal with another Fire King deck. Wonder what his second option is, or if he's going to. I don't know if he's going to try to replay that one. Hmm, he is back on the table though. Let's see what he bounces back with. Much, very lots of patience from Buns there. Let's go. They are starting up yet again. D draw versus D draw here. <clears throat> Fire King Mirror. I don't know. Would that be? Would that be? Water beats fire. It's been known since Pokemon days. So, Bun's gonna trigger the Fire King Island and get that cycle going real quick. So, possibly popping a Barong or a Garunix. Going to search the wrong. We need Grass Deck to beat fire. <laughs> 
We got Sylvans, bro. They just re released Rika. Low Rika. Omega Low. Rika, Rika Mega Low. All about Sylvans. So he's gonna bring out that veal. Give me my life points back, please. Ground beats fire too. I guess triamids are kind of like ground monsters, right? Except they have like a triamid megazord. They got triamid. They got like a triamid defense option. They got a triamid defense option. Now, ad adding the fire king, the fire king onslaught, going to pop his own monster most likely. Search that deck. Oh, popping the kite roid. The wrong. I'm going for lethal here. Dang. And it sucks in this situation too because Arvada negates everything. And there's nothing more satisf satisfying as an Arvada user than to negate your hand traps. Oh, you thought you were protected? Well, I negate that too. So really, we really knew he was going in for it when he popped that kite rod. He was like, it's time. He sees lethal, he sees that blood. He wants to taste. He's going in. Lethal. And save my fantasy league. In this situation, he's forced to have multiple hand traps. So he is going to negate like he planned, but was Kamikaze prepared for it? And he was. He was just trying to guarantee that he doesn't take that big 2700 damage. So now he has a D draw for the follow up. But Arvada, Arvada is just really going to be very annoying to deal with. Actually, it's no longer going to be there because he popped the he popped the Arvada with the effect. So it will be destroyed this turn. So he is going to do that young d draw. When you're confronted with the choice of getting any card you want, you're definitely adding whatever card you want. Doubles for here? Exactly. We don't take 2700 damage around here. Gonna bring out his monster in attack mode. And he's gonna say, actually, I'm negating the effect again. Get back in the graveyard. Chill. So it is Luna Lights. Is Luna Lights. What the heck? And he does have the Luna Light fusion. So yeah, gonna bring out the Martin. And this Arvada has no no negates available. So does he have Does he have the he doesn't have a negate, so does he have a way to stop this push that is coming up during this turn? And it's sort of a, an annoying position to be in too because in the in the 
on the follow-up if this is not game which he can't negate the crimson the crimson fox anymore he's gonna also bring it back Hyteroid incoming Hyteroid cannot stop this because he he'd be attacking into a monster where Kiteroid only protects you from getting attacked directly so does he have the sphere Karibo? And he does. There was a reason why he didn't bring back that Garunix in defense mode. So, kind of a, a rough decision to make to have to bring Lunalite into into Fire Kings because Fire Kings don't target, they, they destroy the field as a whole. So you're really just put in a category of you're just a hyper aggressive deck and now you're just running you're just you're trying to go for these big plays and then the the big play you're making these big plays and now you have to deal with getting negated getting your whole field destroyed is just too much going against you so unfortunate for kamikaze to have to bring that deck to the fire kings that's one of unfortunate situation where your second deck didn't counter what you were dealing with Take that one. Bun's looking mighty strong on these Fire Kings right now. But matchups are certainly in his favor as well. The Buns and Sham show? Oh no. Not over till the fat lady sings. I don't hear if a lady singing. Not one bit. All I hear is 8-bit noises coming from this game. All right, it's game time. Now, oh, I've never sounded out this name for I'm assuming it's H Hav. Is now stepping up for Smogon. I hope I sounded that out right. But looking like he, he, he's bringing out the sharks, they are bringing out the water. They're they're forced into a position where they this could possibly be their last water deck. Maybe why they were saving it. So fire versus water. You guys are getting Pokemon Red versus Blue live. Let's go. OG Pokemon battle. We're gonna bring out Deep Sea Diva, most likely into the infantry. We always see it, but this is also gives him an additional summon. So territory of the sharks making them all level four to give him access to level four exceeds. So overlay network Opu going to bring out Abyss Dweller. Every graveyard effects worst nightmare. And not only that, because he has the infantry attached, it's every time he triggers that effect, he's just going to buns let us proceed. Allow me to proceed. So in phase typhoon, the most OG play in Yu-Gi-Oh! Spell ruler, magic ruler playing itself out. Or spell ruler, whatever they call it now. So now it's on the H half, and so he is now looking at that face down monster like, I'm probably going to negate you. I'm 
Gonna bring out the Marksman. So basically, Marksman OTK is coming. So he is going to attack. Alistair the Invoker. Gonna add the invocation to his hand. Still going in. Show me that money. Show me the money. He's gonna go in with the Marksman. And you know what happens when Marksman enters that damage. Gets that damage in. So he said, nah fam, no. Sphere Karibo, stop that. Not in the safest position as he does have the infantry attached. In his graveyard. Okay, never mind. So we're about to have some this is sort of like a Megaroid City S play. Actually, no, he's gonna pop. He's gonna pop the barong. To search the Arvada. <clears throat> All right, building some suspense here. Oh, he is going to trigger the invocation. Going to summon the Kaliga, actually. So now both players are limited to one attack and effect per monster per turn. Sorry, one effect. One monster effect and one attack a turn. So I'm gonna add the invoker back to his hand. Did not want to trigger the effect that allowed him to do that, and now he's gonna get the Arvada out. So now this is kind of a weird situation to be in because now if let's see what happens a battle phase has been entered he's gonna attack over the marksman book of moon going to flip it face down No, the Al he has the, the Alistair in hand, so what is he going to do to get the Kaliga out of the way? And allow him to get that second attack if he even has a way to do that. So, Dweller's going to pop off. Going to send a Diva. So just just sends the diva. He knows he's gonna negate some graveyard effects here, but does he have something else in his hand to commit? So going to summon Buzzsaw Shark at a mighty 2100 attack. I didn't even know he was so big. Oh, 1600. So going to attack over it. Does not trigger the Alistair. It's going to inflict 19 just to kind of keep him barely out of D-draw range. Get that, just get the necessary amount of damage in. But in his hand, he does have the Alistair. But on his monster, he does have the infantry. So, so there is going to be Book of Moon. Well played. Yeah, so basically none of that is going to be able to save him from it. Buns probably held that book just for this moment. It, it seemed too good to be true. 
If he knew something up he was up, he waited, he waited, he waited, he was waiting. And now patience is gonna pay off here. We know that water doesn't tend to run hand traps and things of that sort. So Unfortunately Perg goes Err. Exact game. Oh no, like not an exact game. So, what can he do to get around this? Summon Diva. Dang, Diva would have been pretty lit. Diva, Diva infantry pop game. But no, he doesn't have it. So, gonna get that invocation back. Alistair Gober. Oh yeah. Basically, Bun's just securing the kill. Going in for GG. Going to take take it away from H Dog. Very patient play from Bun's. Very, very, very scary to have to deal with the perk. Like every monster you put on that board is just walking. Walking into the walking into the big play, very unfortunate. The buns here starting to heat up, looking 3-0, 3-0 record right now, explosive. And oh my god, Smogun is put into a very very small narrow corner now as they're down to their last three decks. They have to find a way to deal with these fire kings or it's just gonna lead to their demise and it's just gonna keep coming at them like that so I think H job is coming back to the table here is he going to repeat he is going to trigger the repeat so that is their final repeat So using their final repeat for the water deck. If there's any deck that can deal with the Fire Kings, it's the water deck. It's just he walked right into the book. Erg play. Very unfortunate. So, set t the the old classic T set. Two more wins for the cog run. Oh my god! <clears throat> so, Hoff taking his time with this play. He is going to trigger the Mystical Space Typhoon, and he is going to go in. There's no way you're playing Mystical Space Typhoon without going in and in. So going to summon the infantry into the Diva. Oh my goodness. This could be the one. Territory of the Sharks, they all become level 4. Show me the Abyss Dweller. Let's go Abyss Dweller. He's gonna go in. Attack into the Alistair. Doesn't even, so he didn't even search it. So he's going to 
Oh, there goes the Villier. Oh no, still in a solid position for H Hoff. Gonna still deal with that board. He wasn't able to search the invocation, so we know what that means. So he is going to hard play the invocation. So he is going to trigger the Abyss Dweller right now so he can't get the invocation back and he's going to pop the Purgatrio. So now Buns is down to his last card. Well. Looking like H Hob is about to take this one. Let's go, H Job. He's gonna draw. His field is looking mighty healthy. Time to enter that battle phase. It's going down. Drown! We don't believe in kite roids. Kites can't swim. Let's go. Let's go, H. Uh, what is Bun's second deck? Got the water. The water deck has a good matchups all or sort of all around the board here. So, will Bun's do a repeat or will he send in? Trying to play Onomat and continue the explosions. We'll see. Bun's is back at the table. Oh yeah, that's right. You can't. Duh. Duh, that's right. I forget. I forgot. Dang. Jeez. Gosh. Okay. Man. Sorry. God. I forget sometimes. All right. Jeez. We got Zane on the on the table. Ghost, <laughs> don't be speaking it to in existence. Don't do it. It's a new rule which was added in the season. You must have missed. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> so he's gonna summon Diva. And he's going to go into that young infantry. Territory of the Sharks. Come in the Abyss Dweller. Abyss Dweller has entered the game. Oh, is this Sidra? Has to be, right? It can't be anything else. But yeah, go go side your APK. Cybernetic fusion support, is that what he added? No, he added overflow. So now he's gonna have a full field all of a sudden. That's not the Onomat. 
This is this is updated. This is futuristic on a map. A cyber. Cyber map. He's just gonna end his turn on this. Now the abyss, the abyss dweller has to worry about getting overflowed next turn. So gonna let it pass, and now it's his turn. So yeah, gonna bring out the second D.Va. D.Va into another infantry? Yep, D.Va into another infantry. Into a cybernetic overflow. Right now, what we're seeing on the board is this a possible destroy two. But she's gonna probably book one of the Sidras, that being now it's only a one pop. Change the treacherous trap hole. Pop in all his... So, actually... Okay, now, yeah, and so this basically shuts down... No, actually, yeah. He won't be banishing these. He'll be returning these back to the deck. Is this really up to what... Activate first? Cyber load is gonna trigger and fizzle out the treacherous. All right, bringing out twin. Gonna flip that face down. Got rid of everything. Nice. And now Territory of the Sharks. This actually ended up working out extremely well for h -Hob. Well played, my man. They're gonna bring out the 37 Hope Woven Dragon Spider Shark. Going to trigger the effect and just to pop it. And then go for so he's going to press for lethal here. Gonna gonna rechange the attack target and then go in for 2200. Let's go. GG. H Hob effectively pushing J buns off the table. Oh, let's go H Hob, the chosen one. Gonna go in and replace Bun. When in doubt, just open two Diva Treacherous Book of Moon going first. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
Everybody does it. Hey, we can't we can't focus on the negatives. Yeah, you lost to an unfortunate situation, but you did your job. You did your job. Now Scorpion is going to step up and continue the legacy. Imagine blaming you can't open pie card combo. <laughs> So he's going to open Atlantean Infantry into the Marksman. Let's go. Territory of the Sharks. This is going to be a fully equipped Abyss Dweller as it's going to be able to pop a face up or a face down. Take your pick. I've opened Naisu. Hope Woven Dragon Spider Shark. Oh, he is going to go Cybernetic Fusion support. Herald of the Abyss. That is rough. That is not a card you want to see. That is not a card you want to see when you open one monster. Oh, he's gonna trigger the fusion gate. Here we go. Here we go. Very, 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 very powerful opening from the Sidra player. Unfortunate situation for Hoff. Oh, he is going to summon. Hydra Sack. The so Scorpion is going to take that. Unfortunate for Hav, he was not able to deal with that. Best deck. Definitely a deck that produces results. It's very explosive. I feel like if he would have went, if the Sider player would have went first, it would have been a whole different game too, because they would have been able to set up. So yeah, Water kind of relies on setting up their board, and they just get it overflowed, and then that can be rough. But it's not over yet. Rizaline. Last two decks stepping up. Let's go.
Rezzy. Rezzy. <clears throat> Six one one time. Oh, knowing that you're going into a Sidra deck, what is your first go to? What are you using to deal with Sidra? Oops, I forgot to add a scorpion score here. Just give me one second on that one. They are going in. There we go. Luna light. Got blue eyes. Which actually, yeah, not a bad choice, especially when you're going first. Just hope, we just gotta hope that Cider doesn't have 16 Cosmic Cyclones followed by 6 something stally like Fire King. Alright, so you're gonna summon blue eyes in phase. Double blue eyes, two big bodies. That's actually not too shabby as long as he doesn't have access to Chimera Tech. So this rules out the Sidra the, the rampage out of the equation. But how the heck are you playing around that overflow next turn? You really need like Spirit plays and stuff like that to disrupt the back row. All right, here we go. Not such an explosive hand from Sidra this time. So, yep, going into the stone. Book of Moon, he said, he said, chill out, relax, read this new Harry Potter. It's, it's kind of weird because that's an egg. Eggs can't read. Going to exceed Shokan, become erratic overlord Heliopolopolis. Oh, he gonna read a book too. Everybody's reading a book. You read a book, you read a book. So now it's up to Scorpion to deal with this board. I think uh, Heliopolis 2400 defense, so Storm with the overflow. Oh no. Oh no. Like, you know it's real. He didn't even storm to pop his opponent's back row. He only needed that cyber load search. So, fusion gate plays. Going to summon the rampage dragon. Still two, they're both cyber dragons. 
I'm going to trigger the fusion gate. Yeah, you're gonna go for the 28 and then the two following 2100 attacks. Yeah, Scorpion is gonna take it. Explosive turn. I was not expecting those Book of Moons. Now it is match point abusement arc. This is crunch time now. Isoline, Resoline on the last deck. It all comes down to this moment. Zane versus Zane. Scorpion's gonna be starting this off, so you know, in this matchup, if the if it um if it is a side or mare, whoever goes first is in the advantage. And it is gonna open with the core APK. Ooh! Explosively full board. This is scary now. It's very scary. Very, very stressful situation to be in as a Sidra player, right? Because your opponent got three back row. That is a lot. That is a lot to deal with. So, does have the core to follow up. So, APK versus APK. Want to add Cybernetic Overflow. Fusion Gate right now. Uh, Prismatic, by the way. Go Fusion Gate. Real, real long toggle here. Real long delay. Just waiting. Should I activate one of my 12 back row? Hmm. Hmm. Gonna summon the Rampage Dragon. Gonna use two re uh, aerials, so yeah, he's popping two back row. Was there a Book of Moon back there? Oh, wow. Mi misses the overflow. Crazy. Why too much Cydras? Cydras are the answer.
So he's going to have the, the, the fusion support too. Which means... GG. Wow. Oh, the two back row, the two back row were, were two cyber load fusions, so that was an extremely tough bluff. So, Rezaline is going to go inside, open up those over. Here we go. Attack 12 times. One, two, three. One, two, three. Damage. Let's go, Rezzy. Beautiful. Beautiful snipes. Alright, so Scorpion oh, Match point still on APK, but What is that second deck or is What is that second deck? Will it be able to deal with that explosive side return? Scorpion's coming back to the table, let's get it. in there. So Blue Eyes versus Sidra. First turn is awarded to Sidra. That was a glitch. Probably from on my end as it still in there. The duel room just hit us with that pump fake. Us? What are you talking about? We, we're in the same game, no way. No sus. Open, open the APK, add it to Cyberload Fusion. White Stone, oh no. You know what that means? All right, he's going to do the Sage thing. Chain Cybernetic Overflow. So he's going to effectively, he's not, he's going to negate the Sage, but the stone is going to be triggered for the end phase. And he's going to chain Book of Moon, protecting his target, protecting his monster. Wow. Oh, but did have a Sidra in hand. Oh, okay. So then, still the same way is going to play out. It's just that in phase, probably going to search spirit. Yeah, he had that Book of Moon in hand, so he's like, I ain't even worried about your overflow. This is where Blue Eyes is super strong because they have access to the spirit with the, the stone toolbox. So he's going to start. Start nicking off that back row one at a time. 
But if Blue Eyes gets into that synchro, it's going to be a hard time for Saedra, so they got to prevent that from happening. So the end phase is going to happen, and the stone is going to trigger. Did he set the overflow? Sorry, yeah, did he set the, the cyber load? He did set the cyber load. So he is going to trigger it. We're going to put them back into the deck. Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon. What's the top deck? We're going to mill two side uh, Sidra cards. The port and gate? That would be rough. That would be rough. <laughs> that would probably be the most amazing two cards in hand already. Double Sidra? Oh no. Oh no. No way. No way stuff is about to happen right now. Alright, just gonna keep it in defense mode and just keep shrinking that deck. The more she the more the more that gets milled, the more chances of drawing what you need is going to increase. So going to enter the battle phase and did not have the overflow to deal with it. Now now has to deal with this big body spirit and the two back row. Oh, not even gonna attack just gonna end his turn he, he's like I'd rather not have a bunch of Sidra babies come on the field I understand we don't need that we don't need that negativity right now so he's gonna go into the sage sage is gonna grab the stone and then possible synchro play here which one which one do you go into Going to go into the Vermilion Dragon mech. Start dealing with that back row. Get the spirit back. Probably has ancient rules. Ancient rules. So Scorpion is going to take that explosive play after a Wow, what a game. What a... Good games by both teams. There was definitely some crazy plays going in there. I thought maybe h -Hub or Resoline would be able to bring that one back or they almost got that, got that engine going. But unfortunately, the explosive turns of Sidra, Blue Eyes, Fire King was just too much. But it's not over yet. There's still much more of this season to come. Congratulations, Abusement Park, adding another win to their record. These are my friends. So. They're going.
there another game going on right now? Where my mods at? Where my mods at? Also, if you guys are enjoying the content, the gameplay, definitely consider subscribing to Duel Links Team Wars. The link is in the chat right there. You get some cool, awesome emotes to support your favorite teams and give them your energy. I am Dark, aka Duel Links Lounge. If you guys are enjoying the gameplay, you're enjoying my casting, definitely consider checking me out on my stream sometime. Also, I believe there's one more game going on. I don't know if it's live right now. But definitely check that out. That'll be the last game of tonight. And yeah, every like just like every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Duel Links Team Wars, you know where to find us. Uh, you guys get out there, enjoy your weekend. Go enjoy outside for like five minutes. Breathe some fresh air. Eat some good food. And enjoy your weekend. Now, who we hosting? Who we hosting? 